result of Christ ascending, when, when he ascended, he sat down at the right hand of God, and God exalted him. Philippians uh, 2, 9 says that, that God has exalted him with a name that is higher than any other name. Uh, listen to what Mark 16, 19 says about what happened when Jesus actually ascended. It says, So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, his disciples, he was taken up into heaven and he sat down at the right hand of God. So there you have it. Jesus <laughs> sat down at the right hand of God when he ascended. Now what is so significant about Jesus sitting down at the right hand of God? Maybe you've wondered before or you've never wondered. What on earth does that really mean? Why is that so beneficial for, for me? Well, let me give you three reasons why this is um, very significant for you. First, because Jesus Christ um, sat down at the right hand of God, it means really he is God's right hand man. He is right there. He is God's right hand man. He is available. Um, you might say, say this of, of somebody in life, like Josh is the CEO's right hand man, which means... Josh is there for the CEO to get anything accomplished that he needs to get accomplished. And Josh is, he has direct access into the boss's office, right? He's, he's right there. He's his right-hand man. Well, Jesus is God's right-hand man, which means that he is always available to accomplish God's tasks on our behalf. In fact, he already has. Um, in John 6, 34, Jesus said, My food is to do the will of him who sent me to accomplish his work. Okay, he's God's right hand man. And when he sat down at the right hand of God, he, he finished all the work that he did on our behalf. Um, now you might ask, what, what, is, what does that have to do with me? Jesus being God's right hand man, um, sitting at the right side of him. Well, it has a lot to do with us. Romans 8, 33 to 34 connects Jesus Christ's seated, right-handed position next to God the Father, to us, um, as it says, who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to get condemned? Okay, so if you ever felt like you had a reason to be condemned on earth because you did wrong and you sinned, this is a really good verse for you. Okay, it's a good verse for everybody who has had a condemning moment on earth. Who is to condemn? And Paul answers, Christ Jesus is the one who died, more than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. So Jesus Christ, as God's right hand man, is available to constantly make us right before the Lord. Uh, he is constantly interceding for us, and he can do it because he's right with God the Father. He is intervening on our behalf of when we actually are guilty on earth, we're not guilty in heaven because who is to condemn? Who is to condemn? Well, Jesus Christ, who condemned Himself, and now He is sitting at the right hand of God, making us guiltless, clearing our guilty conscience. And so, Jesus, as God's right hand man, is right there beside God for us. He 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 makes a relationship between us and God. As as First Timothy two, I believe it's eight, uh, says, "There's one mediator between God and men." And it's the man, Jesus Christ. He's the only one. The second uh, really important detail of Christ's ascended, seated position is that he is seated at God's right hand side, not standing. That's important. That, that Jesus is seated, he's not standing. This means that Christ is resting from all of the work that he did on earth on our behalf. Jesus is interceding for us while, while sitting. He's not interceding for us while standing up or, or while moving around. He's not busy interceding for us. He's resting, which means good news for us. Uh, he's, he's, he's really done interceding for us if you look at his seated position. It's not hard for God to intercede for you. It's not hard for, for Jesus to forgive your sins or, or clear your guilt. He's seated. He's resting. Uh, what we find so hard, which is you know, to feel good after we sin, or to get right after we sin, God is, Jesus is just seated. 
He's not working to do that anymore. He's done. What consequences we might experience for the rest of our life for sinning. The rest of our life. And it could be great. Jesus is just sitting. He's, he's resting. Um, his work is completely accomplished on your behalf. Uh, when I used to work at the Olive Garden, uh, I, I worked as a host. And I never sat down until my job was finished. It was, just, it was just the nature of my job. And I noticed that the servers never sat down until they were done serving and they were off the clock. So when I sat down and when the servers sat down, they queued the off the clock moment when we were resting from all of the work that we did. We were off the clock. Well, when Jesus Christ signaled, when Jesus Christ sat down, it signaled all of his work being accomplished. All of his service for you being accomplished. The table was served. The guests are happy, full of life and food and energy, and Jesus Christ's service was done. He, has, he completely finished his work, and now Jesus sits off the clock. Jesus, as seated next to God, sits off the clock. You know, Hebrews 10, 12 to 14 shows us how Jesus sits off the clock and what that, what that does for us. This is what Hebrews 10, 12 to 14 says, and I hope you love this verse because it encourages me. It really does. Hebrews 10, 12 to 14 says, But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. Right? He sat off the clock. He, he, he had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins. He sat down at the right hand of God, waiting for that time until his enemy should be made a, foot, a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being Sanctified. So what that means is that, that Jesus is, is seated in heaven and he has accomplished for all time, according to his seat in heaven, all of your sins and all of your failures. According to heaven, you are perfect. But what I love about uh, Hebrews 10 verse 14 is how it balances truth. It, it, it balances reality. Because even though God has perfected you for all time, do you still sin and make mistakes in time? Of course. It's the great conundrum of how Christians can be sinners and saints at the same time. And we are. We're both. How can we be sinners and saints at, at the same time? Well, it's because by a single offering, Christ has perfected for all time, according to his seated position in heaven, those who are being sanctified, meaning we still sin. So, when you sin on earth, you are perfect in heaven. That's what this is saying. Uh, according to Jesus' seated position in heaven, you're perfected for all time because he sits outside of time. But according to your stance on earth, you are being sanctified. You sin. That's how it works. But it's encouraging to know that when we sin and when we make mistakes, that Jesus in heaven is seated for us and he's actually perfected us. And that's why it's very important that we understand who we, are, who we are from heaven's standpoint, even when we are sinful from, from earth's standpoint. And so what this uh, might mean for you is that you can rest in your clean relationship before Jesus Christ's seated position for you in heaven. You can rest in that. You don't have to work in order to make yourself clean. There's a big difference between working in order to make yourself clean and asking for forgiveness. Yes, ask for forgiveness, uh, but as 1 John 1, 1, 9 says, He is faithful and just to forgive you of all unrighteousness and, and cleanse you. Um, and so rest in, in who God has already made you. And also, in order to spend time with Jesus now, rest with Him. You know, Jesus is sitting in heaven. And I, I'm afraid that too often we don't sit with Jesus. His position is seated. How often do we sit just in order to experience the presence of Jesus Christ? Here's, this, here's what this means. If we try to run after Jesus, we'll fly past him because he's just seated. He's seated. He's, he's in one location. If we try to jump up in order to 
achieve Jesus Christ's status or achieve his acceptance, we're going to jump over him. He's seated. He's not a high standard anymore. He's seated. He's seated for you. If we try to keep up with Jesus, we're going to run the wrong race because Jesus already ran the race for us and he's seated. He collapsed at the finish line. He died the death for us after living the perfect life for us and God revived him and he seated him. Jesus is seated for you. So rest with him. I know uh, for my left-handed audience today, that's going to be really hard to apply this summer because you'll be pretty busy, but I do know from experience as unit leaders, you have a little more freedom to spend restful time um, in quiet time with the Lord um, than maybe the counselors do, perhaps. And it's so important that you rest with Jesus um, in order to fuel your ministry. Um, in the words of Jesus himself in John 15, 4, abide with me, for you can do nothing apart from me. Abide with me. Simply abide and rest in Jesus. Now, um, the third aspect of what this seated position of Jesus Christ means is that he is continually seated. He is seated in a continually legal way. Okay, so uh, I happen to be a, a board member, um, and I occupy a seated position on the Chamber of Commerce board. And what that means is that even though I'm not seated in that office room right now, uh, I am still seated. You know, I'm considered seated on that board, counted towards that board. So what, what that means is that everything that I do outside of my seated position on the board represents my, my, my spot sitting down on that board. Everything I do right now is a reputation of my seated position. So everything that I do, my failures, my, my successes, etc. Well, everything that Jesus Christ already did on the earth, which we know was perfect, is his seated position in heaven. And he's always considered there. Even though he still works on earth through you, his seated position is in, he is in heaven. And all of his reputation that he lived on earth is being represented on his, his seat in heaven. So what does that mean for us? Well, it means great things for us because did you know that our life is seated with Christ in heaven? It is. Did you know that the moment that you were saved, that... God actually transported you into heaven so that Jesus Christ's seat for you became your seat with Christ. That's what Ephesians 2, 5 to 6 says. Listen to it. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, God made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And he raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. All right, so where Christ is seated, you are seated. Because Christ has ascended, you have ascended. Um, his, his spot in heaven is your spot in heaven because that's what God tells us is true. When he made us alive in Christ, he raised us up with him and he seated us with Christ. So Christ's seated position is your seated position. His seated position that represents all the life that he lived perfect on your behalf is how God counts you. He counts you in Jesus Christ's seat and his reputation. Not your reputation, but Jesus Christ's reputation. Because you're seated with him. Um, and so, whatever your position is down here on earth, it doesn't matter. Whether you're, it's an awesome job, whether you are a great unit leader, which is a great job, a supervisor, a, um, a mom, a dad, a sister, a pastor, whatever it is. Your position down here on earth does not mean a thing compared to your position in heaven. Your position in heaven is that you are seated with Christ. That is so encouraging. It's good news. And so because of your seated position in heaven, God calls you to look at your life from heaven's vantage point as opposed to earth's vantage point. Colossians 3, 1-4 says it this way, If then you have been raised with Christ... And indeed you have, if you are in Christ, then seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will appear with him in glory. That verse is so pitiful for living the Christian life. 
practically. Set your mind on things above where your life is really counted from heaven's vantage point. Notice that, that Paul says Christ is our life. He says Christ is our life. Uh, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. And when Christ who is your life appears, Christ is your life. And so what that, what that means is that, that you die. You've died because his, he is our life, then our life is his life. Our life is his life. So his seated position in, in, in heaven is our seated position in heaven. In the words of Paul in Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives within me. And because Christ lives within us, then we are seated in Christ's seat. We are seated with him. We aren't actually sitting next to Jesus Christ, as God counts it, in heaven. Um, we aren't sitting across the table. We are sit we're sitting on his lap or within him to that effect. And that's why uh, Ephesians 2.6 says that he raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus, not beside him um, or across the table. We are in Christ Jesus. So his seat is our seat. And it's so easy to get discouraged down here on earth, isn't it? We all get discouraged by the way that we think when we're not setting our, th our mind on things above. So how can God lift your spirit? Well, God tells us quite simply, God lifts your spirit by you deciding to lift your mind on things that are above and seek the things that are above. And the way that we seek the things that are above that are just, are just quite simply realizing, realizing that what God thinks of us from heaven is all that really matters. So let me ask you, do you count what God thinks of you in heaven more than what people think of you here on earth? Does it matter to you more of what your position is from heaven, which is a fact, as opposed to the opinions that other people have of you here on earth? That causes us a lot of troubles when we care more about what other people think of us here on earth compared to what, what Jesus thinks of us from heaven. Or, maybe this is what you struggle with. I sometimes struggle with this. I think, I think thoughts about myself that, that aren't enough. And I care more about what I think of myself than what Jesus thinks of me from heaven. And yet, all that, all that matters of you here on earth is what God thinks of you from heaven. In Daniel 10, 11, it illustrates what God is thinking of you from heaven. In Daniel 10, 11, a word comes down from heaven through an angel. And Daniel twice is called, O Daniel, greatly loved. O Daniel, greatly loved. And the truth is, from heaven, you are greatly loved. Jesus Christ is seated for you and also resting in his love for you. So don't care more about your standing on earth than your seated position in heaven. It doesn't matter what your standing on earth ultimately is. It matters what your seated position in heaven is. And that is you are clean, you are forgiven, you are justified because Jesus Christ sat down and when he sat down, he perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. 